everybody talks about the key to retaining length or growing your hair is to baby your ends. But the main reason why I have managed to retain length, especially as a straight haired natural, from this in July 2023 to this in January 23, six months later, is because I have been purely focusing on my cuticles and my cuticle structure. The cuticle structure has so many benefits. It's what protects the inner layers of your hair from damage and will definitely be the key to you retaining length. If you guys want to know exactly how I did it, then definitely keep on watching. Hey guys, it's Natural Nadine here. If you guys don't know me, if you're new here, welcome. We are navigating our natural hair journey with a little bit of science. Without me rambling on, guys, let's get into the video. So let's first talk about the structure of our hair. And I'm so big on understanding the structure of my hair. It's one of the reasons why I've been able to maintain healthy hair in so many different straight states. I used to have relaxed hair. Then I went natural and maintained natural, healthy, curly hair. Now I'm a straight hair natural and I'm maintaining natural straight hair. And one of the main reasons that I've been able to do that is by actually understanding the structure of my hair, how my hair interacts with products, what my hair needs at any given time, and because of that. So I'm always big on understanding the structure of our hair. So that when it's your turn for your hair routine, you'll know how to adjust it for certain reasons. Instead of just copying and pasting someone else's routine, make one that works for you by understanding your hair. Anyways, that was a side note. The structure being that we have the cuticle, the medulla, the cortex. Now the cortex is where the majority of the protein and keratin fibers in our hair sit. It's where the disulfide bonds sit and it's what gives our hair the majority of its strength. Once you have damage deeply, deeply in your cortex, that is when your strands are at their weakest. Your cuticles is the outermost layer or layers, we don't have just one layer of cuticles, we have numerous, between three to five as a black person and up to 10 as an Asian person. And your cuticles is what protects your hair from environmental factors, heat, chemical damage, all types of things. Cuticles are made of majority protein, which is why protein is such an important aspect of your hair routine to replenish your cuticle layers. I'm using products that have protein in every single aspect. Even if you're a textured natural or a curly haired natural or a straight haired natural, okay, reach for protein a lot. Black people have a lot of gaps within their cuticle layers. And what a lot of people don't realize is that protein fills in the gaps between the cuticle layers that we do have. So when you're using protein, you're not only strengthening your hair in general, but you're also filling in gaps within your cuticle layers, which is also gonna form a barrier to damage chemical damage, heat damage, and other types of damage. Is protein really good at being reactive, but it's also a proactive way of avoiding damage. Now, here's one of the things that I find a lot of people struggle with. A lot of us naturalists can struggle with protein overload. And one of the reasons is because black people, as I've mentioned in my previous video, they have high porosity hair, okay? If you guys haven't watched my video on why black people don't have low porosity hair, or if you're a black person and you think you have low porosity hair, okay, you need to watch that video and understand the anatomy of the hair that means that we have highly porous hair and to absorb a lot of protein and absorb it quickly. That can also lead to our hair being stiff and brittle. And then on top of that, that coating that protein leaves on our hair can also hinder the amount of moisture that is able to penetrate and get into our hair, which is why you always hear people talk about this protein moisture balance. If you haven't watched my video on the difference between hydration and moisture, then definitely go and check that out because yeah. Even I still use them interchangeably, but I need to correct myself um, so that you guys, you know, can know what I'm talking about. But yeah, too much hydration can also lead to high growth fatigue where your hair is limp and also weak in that sense. And then too much protein can lead to your hair being dry and brittle and then also weak in that sense. Okay, guys, so that's one way of naturally building your um, cuticle layers and your cuticle barrier is by using protein and replenishing your cuticles in general since they are made of protein, okay? The second way, guys, is by using silicones. Silicones work also in a similar way to oils in the sense that they coat the hair strand for protection. They're also very resistant to heat, which is exactly why you find a lot of heat protectants contain silicone. Silicones are not bad for your hair if you use them correctly. I've effectively hydrated my hair. Okay, my hair is not dry. It's very, very hydrated. I then apply silicone to my hair to seal in that hydration, for one, and to form another barrier on top of my cuticle layer so that when I'm applying heat, when I'm styling my hair, 
I'm not directly heating my hair, I'm heating the silicone which is very resistant to heat and still getting the style that I desire. One of the main reasons that I've been able to maintain my hair healthy when it's straight and two, maintain the shine and all of those things is because of these this product guy. I have only recently discovered it but I've realised that I've always used silicones if that makes sense, even on my curly hair I would use silicones. So I mentioned about this product here, this is the silicone mix. So silicones in general have been absolutely beneficial to me, but when I discovered this guys, oh my gosh everything changed. Then there's also this silicone mix, which is the original um, silicone mix. So the one that I just showed you right now, so this one is the bamboo silicone mix, it's a bit more of a natural um, mixture. This one is the original one that's not as natural. Beforehand I didn't actually know the difference, I'll have both of these linked down below by the way, but beforehand I didn't actually know the difference. The bamboo one is a bit more of a natural um, silicone mix, it has comes from like a vegetable derived, and on top of that it's a lot more lightweight, easier to wash out, and contains no protein. Where this one, the original silicone mix, is a bit more of a heavy, um, silicone it contains ceramides which are also beneficial to the hair and it also contains keratin in it so for me personally the way i'm now alternating between these products is i use this majority of the time um because it's just easier less um prone to like build up and things like that and then maybe like once every like month or once every two months i'll use this one that not only has silicones but also contains keratin and all of that silicones are an absolute go-to and they are absolutely beneficial when it comes to helping to maintain that cuticle barrier because any heat anything else that you're doing the, it's gonna hit the silicone first before it hits your hair and the last thing i want to mention guys is the ph of your hair products i've got a whole separate video a shameless plug that talks about why the ph of your hair matters um but guys i beg of you let's stop using products that have a ph higher than like six why why do we need that okay the hair's optimum ph it likes to be between three and five and one thing that i've noticed unintentionally but intentionally at the same time none of the products i use have a higher concentration than 5.5 and the product that has the highest ph that i use is my shampoo and that's because shampoos do tend to have a slightly higher ph so that they can cleanse the hair effectively and then conditioners have a lower ph so that they can seal that hair cuticle a lot better so the reason why, again, you want to make sure that you're not upsetting the pH balance of your hair is because when your pH is higher than it needs to be, your cuticles are open a lot wider than they need to be, which means you're a lot more prone to damage than if you're keeping your cuticles at their optimum position. pH, guys, worry about the pH of your hair, worry about the pH of your products, okay? because it matters. Okay, I have been talking for way, way, way too long. So I hope you guys learned a thing or two about your cuticle structure, building it, maintaining it, and how it definitely helps with preventing damage in your hair. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.